Sometimes it's important to have a banner to begin a conversation that is a sub-banner within a research report, and I just thought this was brilliant. De Quadros in writing on a Fed communicating to whom? I thought that was brilliant. You go into a whole research thing, who is Jay Powell talking to? Well, I mean, the point of that piece was the, this potential shift in, in the Fed's policy framework, where the basis of it is trying to change public expectations of inflation to get inflation to overshoot their target for a little <clears> while to make up for an undershoot of the target for a little while. But the problem is, is that the public don't really know what the Fed, and we, the, we pointed to a research paper where 40% right. of the public think that the Fed's inflation target is 10% plus. So that was the point of the, who are they communicating well, to? How are they gonna change people's expectations? They don't really know what their target is when it's the most simple um, metric right now. Joe and Joanna Sixpack, who you mentioned within your research, they talk to Bloomberg surveillance every single day. <laughs> and it's real simple. Good inflation really isn't there and they're getting killed by service sector inflation that's the mood is that true well it, it, that's that's what we're seeing in the, in the data we, we do have an offset from rising services inflation from lower goods inflation and and the thing is what that what that averages out to is about two percent inflation so from our perspective we're not sure why there's this push to try to rework the whole Fed, the whole Fed policy framework for what's a relatively small miss on, on, on inflation. So, you know, you look at underlying measures of inflation, the medians, the trim means, they're all around 2%. So, you know, we're not really sure why, why the Fed is, is so driven here to, to change its framework. But, Conrad, when you look at the markets, right, it was like two months ago, it was the end of the world, and then suddenly they were euphoric again. Mm -hmm. Where's the truth? If we look at the inverted yield curve, is it an, an impending, like, strong slowdown, or do we just ignore it? I mean, I would never be one to tell you to ignore the, the, the yield curve, but I mean, I think we have to look at s some of the factors there. We, usually when we have a, a flattening or inversion of the yield curve, um, it's driven by a, a very aggressive Fed, and we haven't had an aggressive Fed. Um, and uh, then there's the arguments that, well, we're, uh, actually, before I, m I move away from the Fed, w w another thing that we have now is the Fed is operating on both ends of the yield curve, right? So we, we have had a Fed that's pushed up short-term rates, um, but we have a Fed that's also repressing long-term rates. So if the Fed um, hadn't made this big shift on, on its uh, balance sheet um, to now from previously Powell's automatic pilot from December and early January, that guidance has now shifted um, and the Fed's going to be ending its balance sheet, wind down. I mean, that is something that's holding down long-term yields and resulting in a flatter yield curve. Um, so that's one aspect. The other aspect is that there's these arguments that are now being made that the yield curve doesn't only signal a slowdown or a potential recession, mm -hmm. it causes one and there was research put out by the St. Louis Fed and one of the points that we've made is we think that people are looking at the wrong yield curve there because really what's happened is deposit rates which is what is funding bank lending, um, have remained very low. Right. And so that yield curve remains steep.